Hi guys, welcome back to our new course on data visualization with pandas. In this course, we are going to study the inbuilt data visualization abilities of pandas. This is gonna be an introductory video. So let's get started. So our first question is, what is data visualization? Data and information visualization, popularly called as data viz or info viz, is an interdisciplinary field that deals with the graphic representation of data and information. It is particularly efficient way of communicating when the data or the information is numerous, for example, the time series data. By using visual elements like charts, graphs, and maps, data visualization tools provide an accessible way to analyze and understand trends outliers and patterns in data. So basically, what is the benefit of data visualization is that it helps to analyze data in a better way and predict the future values or outcomes of data. Now let's move on to our next question, which is, is data visualization an art or a science? So we know that data and information visualization has its roots in the field of statistics and is therefore generally considered a branch of descriptive statistics. However, both design skills and statistical and computing skills are required to visualize data effectively. It is argued that it is both an art and a science. This is because data visualization has its concepts based on descriptive statistics while to draw plots or maps we require design skills so that's why it's both an art and a science also please note that the study of statistics has two major branches the descriptive statistics involves organization summarization and display of data while the inferential statistics involves using a sample to draw out conclusions about a population now let's move on to our next topic, which is why data visualization or what are the benefits of data visualization? The first one is visualized data is processed faster. The second one is data visualization dashboard supports visual learner. So there are some people who can't understand trends from the text or the numeric data easily. So data visualization is very important for these people or the visual learners. Third one is that data visualization tools show insights that may be missed in traditional reports. We know that the numeric reports are very long and lengthy and it's easier to miss trends or insights from those reports. So data visualization helps to visualize those reports and find out the trends more effectively. It helps us to find out the room for improvement it can also help in boosting the productivity and sales for a corporation. And last one is, it helps out to find trends from data as already discussed. And our last topic is the plot types that we are going to cover in Pandas. So these are area plots, bar plots, line plots, scatter plots, box plots, hexagonal bin plots, kernel density estimation or KDE plots and histograms. So these are the plot types that we are going to draw in pandas. So in today's lecture, I introduce you to the concept of data visualization and the plot types that we are going to draw in this course. That will be all for today. This video is brought to you by Programming Knowledge. Please like, comment, share, subscribe and hit the bell button for updates and stay tuned with us for next lecture. Thank you. Hi guys, welcome back to our course on data visualization with pandas. In today's lecture, I'm going to introduce you to the concept of style sheets. So let's get started. So today's topic is style sheets. So Matplotlib has style sheets that you can use to make your plot look a little nicer. 
So style sheets make your plots or charts attractive in appearance. So these sheets can include plot B image, plot GG plot, and a few more other styles that we'll discuss in this lecture. So what is a style sheet or how do style sheets work? So basically they create a set of style rules that your plots follow. They're like fashion influencers, like fashion influencers or celebrities create fashion trends that you guys follow in a similar manner. Style sheets create a set of style rules that your plots follow. And remember that the main objective of having style sheets is to make your plots look more attractive and nice. They give a more professional look to your plots. Now let's demonstrate with an example. So I'm going to import NumPy as NP and import pandas as PD. And now I'll read a data frame. So df1 is equal to pd.readcsv and I'm going to pass df1 and index call is equal to zero. I'll display the data frame first. So this is our data frame. It contains thousand rows and four columns with the name ABC and D. Now I'm going to create a histogram first. So this is the histogram. Don't worry, I'll cover in detail how to create a histogram. Now let's call the style. So for that, I have to import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. So first oil that we are going to use is ggplot. So I'll write plt.style.use and I'll pass ggplot and I'll draw the histogram once again. So df of a dot hist, it is df1. So it is df one. So this is our resultant plot after using the style gg. Now let's call another style. So let it be bmh this time. So I'll write plt.style.use bmh. And I'll create or I'll draw the histogram once again. So this is the resultant histogram after using the style bmh. Now let's call one more style that is dark background to create darker background in your plot. So I'll call the style plt.style.use dark background and I'll draw the histogram once again. So it is df1 and not df. So that's why I got an error. This is the resultant plot after calling the style dark background. Now let's call the last style which is 538. So I'll write plt.style.use 538. Let me just pass it 538. Now I'll draw the histogram once again. So it's df of a dot hist. Sorry, it's df1. I tend to forget it every time. So this is the resultant plot after calling the style 538. So that's all about the style sheets and its application to make your plots look a little nicer. And I'll discuss histogram in detail in future video. That will be all for today. This video is brought to you by Programming Knowledge. Please like comment, share, subscribe and hit the bell button for updates and stay tuned with us for next lecture. Thank you. Hi guys, welcome back to our course on data visualization with pandas. In today's lecture, I'm going to teach you what is an area plot and how can we draw area plots using pandas. So let's get started. So today's topic is area plot. So first of all, we are going to draw a stacked area plot. So draw a stacked area plot. So what is an area plot? An area plot displays quantitative data visually. 
This function wraps the matplotlib area function. So in a line plot, we just have line, but in an area plot, we have shaded area. I'm sure you must have drawn area plots all the time as a teenager in school. But now we are going to see how can we draw area plots and visualize data using pandas. So the syntax for drawing area plot is data frame dot plot dot area and we can specify the x coordinate or the x axis the y axis and some additional arguments so you can find out more about the additional arguments in the documentation of pandas but for now these are enough so i'll demonstrate now First of all, I'm going to import pandas as pd, then I'll read a CSV file and I'll store it in a variable as a data frame. So this is our result in data frame. It has four columns and then rows. I'll write df2.plot.area to create the plot. So we have four colors corresponding to the four columns and also note that the indexes act as the x values here by default and columns take the y values. We can also change them by passing the value of x while calling the method or the function. Now let's create our own data frame and draw an area plot for it. So I'll write df is equal to pd.dataframe. And this time I'm going to pass a dictionary. If you don't know how to create a data frame from a dictionary, please refer to our previous course on pandas where I have covered these topic in detail. So I have three keys here in my dictionary. They are sales, signups and visits. Also, I have to pass the index after I finish with the dictionary. So I'll write the index is equal to pd dot date underscore range and I'll specify the start, the end and the frequency. So the index in this case is form of date. And I'll pass frequency value also. So I've created a data frame successfully. This is the result in data frame. Now I'll write df.plot.area and this is the result in area plot. So area plots are stacked by default and the index values can be changed as per our convenience. Please take care of these two things. The index values can be changed as per our convenience and the area plots are stacked by default. So to produce an unstacked plot, we have to pass stacked is equal to false. So I'll demonstrate how to draw an unstacked area plot so I'll write df.plot.area and I'll pass the stacked as false. So this is the resultant area plot. Also note that we can draw an area plot for a single column by passing the y value as the name of that particular column. Also, we can change the x axis value explicitly. For that, I'll write df.plot.area and I'll specify the x axis. So it is giving me an error. I think this is because I don't have any column by the name day. Let me just go back and check once. So I have no column by the name day. So let me change it to some valid column. So let it be sales. So this is the resultant area plot. In today's lecture, 
I taught you about area plots, what are area plots and how to draw area plots using pandas. That will be all for today. This video is brought to you by Programming Knowledge. Please like, comment, share, subscribe and hit the bell button for updates and stay tuned with us for next lecture. Thank you. Hi guys, welcome back to our course on data visualization with pandas. Today I'm going to teach you about bar plots. So let's get started. So the topic for today is bar plot. So first question is what is a bar plot? A bar plot is a plot that represents categorical data with rectangular bars with lengths proportional to the values that they represent. I'm sure you have, must have drawn bar plots when you were in standard 5 or 6 and they continue till you are in college. So bar plot shows comparisons among discrete categories. One axis of the plot shows the specific regions being compared and the other axis represents the major value. Now you have an X and a Y axis. So the X axis shows the categories you are comparing and the Y axis represents the values that you have measured. So this is all about bar plots when we refer to the theory. So one axis of the plot shows the specific categories being compared and the other axis represents a measured value. So the syntax for drawing bar plot is data frame dot plot dot bar. You can pass the x value, the y value and some additional arguments. I have passed this as none initially, but we can pass some column value. So x, y and some additional arguments that you can find in the documentation of pandas. Now let's demonstrate. So I'll just write import pandas as pd and I'll run this cell and I'll read a data frame. So df2 is equal to pd.readcsv. So I'll write df2 in brackets and I'll run this. I'll display the data set or the data frame. So it has four columns as shown. Now in order to draw the actual plot, I'll write df2.plot.bar and this is the resultant bar plot. Here we have four colors, one color corresponding to each column A, B, C and D and also we have nine categories corresponding to each index representing the index values 0 to 9. So it takes index as the categorical or the categories. So by default, this plot is not stacked. To get a stacked version, we have to specify stacked is equal to true. So by default, it isn't stacked. To get a stacked version, we have to specify stacked is equal to true. I'll draw or I'll plot the stacked version. So I'll write df2.plot.bar and I'll pass stacked is equal to true. So this is the stacked version. We don't have different bars. We have one bar corresponding to one category. So this is the stacked version and that's all about bar plots. That will be all for today. 
This video is brought to you by Programming Knowledge. Please like, comment, share, subscribe and hit the bell button for updates and stay tuned with us for next lecture. Thank you. Hi guys, welcome back to our course on data visualization with Pandas. In today's lecture, I'm going to introduce you to the concept of line plots and I'm going to demonstrate how can we draw line plots using functions offered by Pandas. So let's get started. So the topic is line plot. So line plot is also called as a plot series or data frame as lines. These are the alternative names for line plot. So also called as a plot series or data frame as lines. So the line plot function is useful to plot lines using data frames values as coordinates. So it's useful to plot lines using data frames values as coordinates. Now I'll discuss the syntax. So the syntax is data frame dot plot dot line and we can pass the parameters such as the x axis, the y axis and some additional arguments. You can find out more information on these additional arguments in the official pandas documentation. Let's demonstrate now. So first of all, we are going to draw line plot for a series. So line plot for a series. So it makes sense that we have to create a series first. So S is equal to pd.series and I'm going to pass a Python list. So we have a series now. Now we can draw a plot using s.plot.line. I forgot to import pandas. So let's import pandas. So I'm going to write import pandas as pd. And then I'll run the cell again. So this is the resultant line plot for the series we have created. This is the simplest line plot, the line plot for a series. Now let's draw it for a data frame. Now we are going to draw a line plot for a data frame. We need a data frame first. Let's read it from the CSV file. So df1 is equal to pd.readcsv and we'll pass df1 and I'll display the data frame. This is the resultant data frame. So it has five columns here. Now I'll write df1.plot.line and I'll pass x is equal to df1. Dot index y is equal to b so we are taking the value of the column b on y axis and the value of index on the x axis and we are going to take the figure size as 12 comma 3 and we are going to take the line width as 1 these are some additional arguments you can find more about them in the documentation of pandas it's giving an error. So let's see why is it giving an error here. I think it's because I have not imported the data frame very well. I need to include the index column also when I import a data frame. So let me just add it. So index column is equal to zero. So this is the data frame. 
now let me just correct this thing so let me just make a few changes quickly so let's observe the line plot without any argument so this is the resultant line plot now let's change the line width so it becomes a little messier now let's decrease the line width so this is a very light shaded line plot now let's change the y-axis value because it's difficult to observe a lot of things at once so y is equal to b so it's giving the line plot only for column b and i've changed the line width now it's a little nicer so this is how we can draw line plot for a data frame that will be all for today this video is brought to you by programming knowledge please like comment share subscribe and hit the bell button for updates and stay tuned with us for next lecture thank you hi guys welcome back to our course on data visualization with pandas in today's lecture i'm going to introduce you to the concept of scatter plots and i'll demonstrate how to create a scatter plot so let's get started so today's topic is scatter plots so our first question is what is a scatter plot so a scatter plot is a type of data visualization technique that shows relationship between two numerical variables in form of dots or spheres because we can change the size of dots as well so it is a type of data visualization techniques that shows a relationship between two numerical variables for plotting so for plotting to scatter using data frame class there is a member called plot and calling the scatter method on member plot draws a scatter plot if you don't understand what is this you can find more about it in the official documentation of pandas so calling the scatter method on the member plot draws a scatter plot so the syntax is data frame dot plot dot scatter and you can pass x y values x axis y axis then the size of the dot and the color of dots these are some of the parameters there are more parameters you can find more about them in the documentation now let's demonstrate how can we draw a scatter plot. So I'll import pandas as pd and I'll read a data frame first. So df1 is equal to pd.readcsv. I'll pass the file name and index column as 0. So this is our resultant data frame. Now I'll write df1.plot.scatter. I'll pass x as a, y as b. And this is the resultant scatter plot. Now we can change the color map of the plot to make it more attractive. So for that, I'll write df1.plot.scatter and I'll pass x is equal to a, y is equal to b. These are the column values. And I'll pass this color as c and the c map as cool warm. So this is the resultant scatter plot. Also, it's important to note that we can change the size of dots to indicate the value of a column. So a bigger dot or a bigger sphere will indicate a greater value and a smaller dot will denote a smaller value. Also note that we have to pass the size as a list and not a scalar. So I'll write df1.plot.scatter. I'll pass x as a y as p and the size is equal to df1 
C multiplied by 100. So it gave me an error because, oh, I have to correct it and change the equal to sign to multiply and small c to capital C. So just hang on a second. So I have to change the equal to sign to multiply. Now I'll run. So this is the resultant scatter plot, but it's not very attractive right now and it's difficult to read. So I'll make a few more changes. That is, I'll pass the C value as capital C and I'll change the C map value as well. So C map is equal to cool warm. Let me change the C value as well. So C is equal to capital C and C map is equal to cool warm. I'll run this. This is the resultant plot or the scatter plot and it's more beautiful. That's all about scatter plots and how to draw scatter plots. That will be all for today. This video is brought to you by Programming Knowledge. Please like, comment, share, subscribe and hit the bell button for updates and stay tuned with us for next lecture. Thank you. Hi guys, welcome back to our course on data visualization with pandas. In today's lecture, I'll explain what is a box plot and I'll demonstrate how can we draw box plot using functions offered by pandas. So let's get started. So today's topic is box plots. So what is a box plot? A box plot is the visual representation of the depicting groups of numerical data through their quartiles. Now what are quartiles? Imagine we have a distribution. The median divides it in two parts. If we have three such entities which divide the distribution in four equal parts, those entities are called as quartiles. So box plot is the visual representation of the depicting groups of numerical data through their quartiles. Box plot is also used for detection of outliers in a data set. It captures the summary of the data efficiently with a simple box and whiskers and allows us to compare across groups. So another point to note is that box plot is also used for detection of outliers in a data set. Now what are outliers? These are the values which are very far away from the normal data or the general data in that data set. There's a lot of difference between these values and the mean or the central location. Box plots allows us to summarize a sample using the 25th, the 50th and 75th percentiles. These are also called as lower quartile median and upper quartile. Please always remember that the 50th percentile, the median and the entity which divides the distribution in two equal parts is median. We'll study more about box plot and quartiles in statistics. And we'll also see how can we calculate quartiles for a given distribution. So more about box plots and quartiles in future videos on statistics or statistics for data science. Now it's important to know that a box plot consists of five important things or entities. So let me just change it to colon. Yeah. Now the first one is the minimum value. The second is the first quartile or the lower quartile. The third one is the median. The median divides the distribution into two equal parts. The fourth one is the third quartile or the upper quartile. And the last one is the maximum value. 
Now let's demonstrate how can we actually draw a box plot. So I'll import pandas as pd then I'll read a CSV file and extract a data frame from the file. So df is equal to read CSV df2. So it's pd.readcsv. So just correct it. df is equal to pd.readcsv. Now this is our data frame. Now I have to write df.plot.box. And I'll run the cell. So it's giving an error. It's df, not df2. So this is the resultant box plot. Please note that this green line in the center denotes the median. So this is the simple box plot. Here you can see that this portion, this portion, this portion and this portion contains 25% each. So this total is 100%. If it had any outlier, it would be outside the box or the whiskers. We can also enable grids and add other parameters. So if I want to enable the grid, I have to write df.plot.box grid is equal to true. So for more details, please check the documentation. You'll get a lot of things if you refer the documentation. Let me draw the grid version. So I'll specify grid is equal to true. So this is the version with grid. So in today's lecture, I covered the box plots. That will be all for today. This video is brought to you by Programming Knowledge. Please like, comment, share, subscribe and hit the bell button for updates and stay tuned with us for next lecture. Thank you. Hi guys, welcome back to our course on data visualization using pandas. In today's lecture, I'm going to explain you what is a hexagonal pin plot and I'm also going to demonstrate how to draw one using pandas. So let's get started. So our topic is hexagonal bin plots. In a hexagonal bin plot, a two dimensional lattice is divided into number of hexagonal grids of size n cross m based on the number of data points of the distribution of two variables x and y that fall under any hexagon. The hexagons are given a color. So a hexagonal bin plot consists of a lot of small hexagons and on one side we have an x axis and on the other side we have a y axis and these hexagons are given colors depending on the values of these variables that are x and y. Hexagonal bin plots are generally used when the data is very large or we can say that it is really very helpful when the number of points in the distribution is very very large. So you just need to remember that there will be a lattice which will be divided into smaller hexagonal grids and there will be two variables x and y and smaller hexagonal grids will be given a color depending on the value of x and y. Also note that it is used when number of points in the distribution is very large. Now let's demonstrate. This time we'll create a new data frame cause we need a data frame with a lot of points and the previous data frames were not large enough. So this time I'm going to use the ran n method of numpy to create a data frame. So data frame is equal to pd dot data frame and I'll pass np dot random. 
So np.random.randn and let the size be 1000 comma 2 and the column names be a and b. Now I'll run this. Just hang on a second. So I'll run this. So this is giving me an error because I've not imported numpy. Now let me run this again. And this is the resultant data frame. Now we have created the data frame. Let's plot now. So to plot, I'll write df.plot.hex bin and I'll pass the value of x and y. Sorry, it's y and b in inverted commas. Yeah, so this is the resultant hexagonal bin plot. It's not very clear. I'm not able to derive any information from this plot so i'll customize it a little bit so i'll write df.plot.hexbin and i'll pass the value of x and y and i'll change the grid size to 25 and the color map to cool warm now it's a little more clear than the previous one you can derive the information from these hexagonal grids more easily. Now let's try to customize it a little bit more. So there's a mistake. I need to change it to capital. So this is another customization for a better experience. So that's all about hexagonal bin plots in pandas we'll study about it more in statistics that will be all for today this video is brought to you by programming knowledge please like comment share subscribe and hit the bell button for updates and stay tuned with us for next lecture thank you hi guys welcome back to our course on data visualization with pandas in this lecture i'm going to teach you about kde plot and density plots and I'll also demonstrate how to draw these. So let's get started. So today's topic is KDE plots. So in statistics, kernel density estimation or KDE is a non-parametric way to estimate the probability density function or PDF of a random variable. So in short, the KDE plot or the kernel density estimation plot gives us the idea about the probability density function or PDF of a random variable. This function will use Gaussian kernels and include automatic bandwidth estimation or determination. We'll study about all these in statistics in details, but remember that the KDE plot gives us an idea of the PDF of a random variable and this function will use Gaussian kernels and include automatic bandwidth estimation slash determination. So more about PDF, random variables and Gaussian kernels in statistics statistics is very interesting branch of mathematics which intersects with data science now the syntax for kd plots is data frame dot plot dot kde and we can pass the parameters like bandwidth method IND and some additional arguments. So you can pass these parameters or not. They are optional. So these are bandwidth method, IND and some additional arguments. You can find more about them in the documentation of pandas. So all these parameters are optional. Now let's demonstrate how to draw a KDE plot. 
So first of all, I'll import pandas as pd. Then I'll read a CSV file and I'll extract the data frame from the file. So df2 is equal to pd.readcsv and I'll pass df2. Now I'm going to draw the plot. Wait a second. It's df2 of k dot plot dot kde and here it is. So this is the kde plot. Now we can also analyze multiple columns at once. This is for the column A only. So we can also analyze multiple columns at once. So for that, we'll use a density plot instead of a KDE plot. So I'll write df2 dot plot dot density and I'll close the bracket and I'll run it. So this is the KDE plot and this is the density plot. So in today's lecture, I taught you the KDE plot and the density plot. And I also demonstrated how to draw these plots. So that's all about KDE and density plots. That will be all for today. This video is brought to you by Programming Knowledge. Please like, comment, share, subscribe and hit the bell button for updates. And stay tuned with us for next lecture. Thank you. Hi guys, welcome back to our course on data visualization with pandas. In today's lecture, I'm going to teach you how to draw histograms with pandas. So let's get started. So the topic is histograms. So histograms are a way of representing the distribution of data. In other words, histograms depict how a distribution's shape look like when viewed with the help of a graph. So a histogram is made up of bars, which each bar representing a certain data values. The height of the bar indicates how many data points fall within that range. So what is the difference between histogram and a bar plot is a histogram is somewhat continuous. It's not continuous on the y axis, but it's continuous on the x axis. While a bar plot is discrete on the x axis as well as the y axis. So histograms can be used to compare two data sets or to observe how distribution of data changes over time. We can draw histograms to see what is the type of our distribution. For example, is it normal or binomial or anything? So it helps us to draw conclusions. We apply the histogram method on individual series of a data frame. Let's plot now. So first of all, I'm going to import pandas as pd and then I'm going to read a data frame. So let it be df1 is equal to pd.readcsv. So it should be read CSV. I made a small mistake. So please take care because I wanted to create a data frame. So I directly wrote a data frame, but it's read underscore CSV. Now let me display the data frame. So this is our data frame. Now to draw a histogram, I'll write DF1 and in square bracket, the column name dot plot dot hist and brackets close. So this is our resultant histogram. On X axis, we can see the values and on the Y axis, we can see the frequency. For details or for a more finer view, we can increase the number of pins. So let me just increase the pins 
to 70. So let the bins be 70. So now you can see the histograms in much more fine detail. So it's kind of a normal distribution if you observe it carefully. It's not a proper, but it's sort of a normal distribution. A normal distribution is better visible with the KDE plot because it's a continuous distribution. Now let's see how to observe multiple columns at once. So for that, we have to write df1.plot.hist. This time we are not passing or not applying it on a series while on the whole data frame. So in this case, it is tagged. So it's not clearly visible. Now I have an assignment for you. You have to observe multiple columns at once, but not in the same chart. You have to come out with the method of plotting different charts for each column. So you can observe it more carefully. That's all about histograms. That will be all for today. This video is brought to you by Programming Knowledge. Please like, comment, share, subscribe and hit the bell button for updates and stay tuned with us for next lecture. Thank you. Hi guys, welcome back to our course on data visualization with Pandas. In today's lecture, we are going to discuss the problem statement of our data visualization project. So let's get started. So first of all, we are going to take a look at the project objectives. So the project title or the project topic is data visualization with pandas. The first objective of the project is introduction to data analysis. The second one is demonstration of the concept of style sheets. The third one is regarding the different kind of plot with pandas and fourth one is regarding the modification of plots to create more defined and beautiful or professional plots. Our project has been divided into six parts or six tasks. Now we are going to discuss every one of them in detail. So let's move on. So our first task, read the data frames DF1, DF2 and DF3 and analyze them with the help of pandas function. Also note that these data frames can be found at the GitHub repository provided along with this course. The second task is read the CSV file named df1 that is data frame 1 and pass the column 0 at the index while reading. For column B, draw a histogram and use different styles to improve the appearance of your plot. So this subtask or this task is regarding style sheets. Now moving to the next task, read the CSV file named DF3 or data frame 3, draw a scatter plot, pass the X value as column A, Y value as column B, C value as red, S value as 50 and figure size as 12,3. Also draw a histogram for column A of the data frame. Use the parameters as alpha value as 0.5 and bins is equal to 25. Now moving on to the next task. In fourth task, we have to draw two plots. First of all, draw a box plot comparing columns A and B of the data frame TF3. And the second one is draw a KDE plot of the column D of DF3. The fifth task is draw a density plot for data frame 3 or DF3 and figure out how to change line width and make the line style dash. This is something that is like providing a makeover to your plot. Beautifying the plot can help us figure out patterns from the plot a little faster and it looks good as well. So our last task or the sixth task is 
create an area plot for all the columns for just the rows up to 30 for the data frame df3 so we have to include only the rows up to 30 and we have to include all the necessary columns also we need to figure out a way to display the legend outside of the box that's all about problem statement project objectives and description of tasks that will be all for today this video is brought to you by programming knowledge please like comment share subscribe and hit the bell button for updates and stay tuned with us for next lecture thank you hi guys welcome back to our course on data visualization with pandas today we are going to solve the task one of our project so let's get started so our first task is read the data frames df1 df2 and df3 and analyze them with the help of pandas function also link to these can be found at the github repository provided along with this code so our first job is reading the data frames so the title is reading the data frames now we are going to import pandas as pd so import pandas as pd and then we are going to read the data frames so df1 is equal to pd dot read csv And I'm going to pass df1 and index as the first column. So index call is equal to 0. Similarly, df2 is equal to pd.readcsv and I'm going to pass df2. And df3 is equal to pd.readcsv and I'm going to pass the df3 now i'm going to display the data frames so displaying the data frames so this is the first data frame it has four columns capital a b c and d so it has thousand rows and four columns the second data frame has four columns a b c d and 10 entries or rows and the third data frame also has four columns a b c d and 500 rows now let's see their description so they have one dot describe so this is the description of the first data set so to count is thousand and you can see the mean the minimum the maximum and the quartile distribution similarly we can analyze the second data set as well as the third data set so this is the description of the second data set now let's describe the third data set so df3 dot describe so this is the description of the third data set now we'll try to extract some information so we'll use the info method so this is the information on first data set so it has thousand entries and four columns and all are non null similarly we can analyze the second data set as well as the third data set so this is the information regarding the second and third data sets respectively. Now let's fetch all the key values or the column names. So we use the keys method. So all the data sets have four keys. So A, B, C, D. Only the difference is the capital and small letter notations. So we use the keys method to fetch all the column names. Now let's analyze the correlation among all the columns in different data sets. So our next objective is to analyze the correlation. 
So correlation analysis. I'll use the core method. So there is one dot core. So this is the correlation among the four columns of first data set. Similarly, I can analyze the correlation in second data set as well as the third data set. So this is the correlation in third data set. So we have successfully read and analyzed all the data sets. That will be all for today. This video is brought to you by Programming Knowledge. Please like, comment, share, subscribe and hit the bell button for updates and stay tuned with us for next lecture. Thank you. Hi guys, welcome back to our course on data visualization with Pandas. Today we are going to solve the second task of our project. So let's get started. So our second task is read the CSV file name df1 that is data frame 1 and pass the column 0 as the index while reading it. For column B, draw a histogram and use different styles to improve the appearance of your plot. So these are the two subtasks under the task 2. So now let's solve. So this is the second task. First of all, I'm going to import pandas as pd. So import pandas as pd and now I'll proceed to read the data frame. So I have to write data frame name or df3 is equal to pd.read underscore csv and I have to pass df1 and I have to pass index column or index underscore call is equal to 0. So I have passed column 0 as the index. So I have passed column 0 as index. Now let's draw histograms and use different styles. So we have completed the first subtask and now we have to complete the second subtask. Now let's draw histograms and use different styles. So I'll write df1b.hist. So this is giving me an error. Let me just figure out why it's giving me an error. So this is probably because the column name is capital. So I'll change it. And this is the histogram. Now let's use different styles. So using styles. So for that we have to do an import. So we have to import matplotlib.pyplot as plt and we have to write an extra command that is plt.style.use and first of all I'll pass ggplot. So this is the resultant histogram after the use of style ggplot. Now let me just change it to bmh and I'll display the histogram once again. So this is the resultant histogram after using the style bmh. Now we'll use dark background. So I'll write in the bracket dark underscore background and I'll display the histogram once again. So this is the resultant histogram after using the style dark background. Now let's move on to our last style that is 538. So I'll use the style 538. So this is the resultant plot after using the style 538. So my personal favorite is ggplot. 
because it gives a unique appearance to a plot. So my personal favorite is GG plot. Yours can be dark background or BMH or 538 or many more. You can pick your favorite, but mine is GG plot. So we have completed our second task of the project. That will be all for today. This video is brought to you by Programming Knowledge. Please like, comment, share, subscribe and hit the bell button for updates and stay tuned with us for next lecture. Thank you. Hi guys, welcome back to our course on data visualization with Pandas. Today we are going to solve the third task of our project. So let's get started. So the third task is read the CSV file name df3 that is data frame 3. Draw a scatter plot. Pass the x value as column A, y value as column B, c value as red, s value as 50 and figure size as 12,3. Also draw a histogram for column A of the data frame and use the parameters as alpha value of 0.5 and number of bins is equal to 25. Now let's solve this. So first of all, let me just write the heading task 3 and let me import so let me import pandas as pd. So my first job is to read the data frame. So df3 is equal to pd.read underscore csv and I'll pass data frame 3. Also let me just print the first 5 entries of the data set. Now we have to draw a scatter plot. So for that, I'll write df3.plot.scatter and I'll pass the x value as a, y value as b, s is equal to 50 and fig size or the figure size as 12, 3 and I'll just run the cell. So this is our scatter plot. Now let me change the color by specifying the C value as red. So this is the resultant plot. Now we are going to change the color. Now let's change the color. For that I will just copy and paste the command and I'll add an extra parameter that is C is equal to red. I'll run this cell and this is the resultant plot. So our second subtask is to create a histogram. So for that I'll write the command to create a histogram that is df3 square bracket A because we are drawing a histogram concerning the column A. So df3 A dot plot dot hist. So this is our histogram. Now let's change the alpha value and the number of pins. So this type is gg plot because I like it. Now I'll just change some parameters. So I'll write df3 e dot plot dot hist alpha is equal to 0.5 and bins is equal to 25. So this is the resultant histogram. So it is a little transparent and has number of pins as 25. So we have successfully solved our third task. That's all for task 
3. That will be all for today. This video is brought to you by Programming Knowledge. Please like, comment, share, subscribe and hit the bell button for updates and stay tuned with us for next lecture. Thank you. Hi guys, welcome back to our course on data visualization with pandas. In today's lecture, we are going to solve the fourth task of our project. So let's get started. So the task four is draw a box plot comparing columns A and B of the data frame DF3 and also draw a KDE or kernel density estimation plot of the column D of the data frame. Now let's move on to the solution. So the heading is task four. And the first subtask is draw a box plot. So draw a box plot and compare the columns A so compare the columns A and B. So I'm going to import pandas as PD and I'm going to read the data frame first. So I'll write reading the data frame first and the command is TF3 is equal to pd.read csv and in the bracket I'll pass df3. I'll display the data frame. So this is the resultant data frame. So this is the data frame. So first of all, we'll draw a box plot. For that, I'll write df3. Let me just write. So df3 and in square bracket, I'll pass a list. So it's like a list inside a list. So in square bracket, I have passed the list containing the elements A and B and I'll write dot plot dot box. So this is the resultant box plot comparing the columns A and B. You can see the quartile distribution for both columns A and B. So the quartile distribution seems to be different and the position of quartiles is also different. So the quartile distribution of columns A and B is different as shown now let's move on to our second subtask that is kde plot so our second subtask is regarding kde plot so the target column for it is d so we are using small notation, so it's small d. Now I'll write df3 d dot plot dot kde. So this is the resultant kde plot. So this is the resultant kde plot. So we have completed our fourth task as well. So task four has been completed. That will be all for today. This video is brought to you by Programming Knowledge. Please like, comment, share, subscribe and hit the bell button for updates and stay tuned with us for next lecture. Thank you. Hi guys, welcome back to our course on data visualization with Pandas. Today, we are going to solve the fifth task of our project. So let's get started. So the fifth task is draw a density plot for data frame three or 
TF3 and figure out how to change the line width and make the line style dash. Now let's move on to the solution. So this is task 5. So first of all, I'm going to read the data frame. So reading the data frame. So I'm going to import pandas as pd and then I'll write df3 is equal to pd dot read underscore csv and I'll pass df3. Now I'll print the data frame. So this is the resultant data frame. Now we are going to draw a density plot. So for that I'll write df3 dot plot dot density. So let's draw a density plot first. And the syntax is data frame name dot plot dot density. So df3 dot plot dot density. And I'll run this cell. So this is the resultant density plot. Also note that a density plot provides a comparison of all the columns. So we can analyze all the columns in a single plot. So this is the density plot for all the columns. Now let's draw the density plot for a particular column and let that column be column A. So I'll write df3 of A dot plot dot density. So my keyboard missed a word that is plot. So this is the resultant density plot for column A. Also note that a density plot for a single column will be same as the KDE plot. Let's see by drawing a KDE plot as well. You can see that the shape and the structure is same. So both of them are same. Now let's figure out how to change the line width and line style. So we have to change the line width and line style. For that, I'll write df3 dot plot dot density. And I'll pass the line width or LW as 5 and line style as dash or LS is equal to dash dash. So this is the resultant density plot after changing the line width and line style. This is not very attractive or clear. So let's analyze for one column only. So I'll write df3 square bracket a dot plot dot density and I'll pass the line width as 5 and line style as dashed. So this is the resultant plot. So we have solved the fifth task as well. That will be all for today. This video is brought to you by Programming Knowledge. Please like, comment, share, subscribe and hit the bell button for updates. And stay tuned with us for next lecture. Thank you. Hi guys, welcome back to our course on data visualization with Pandas. Today, we are going to solve the sixth and the last task of our project. So let's get started. So our sixth task is create an area plot for all the columns for just the rows up to 30 for the data frame 3. And also figure out a way to display the legend outside of the box. So we have to create an area plot for all the columns but up to 30th row only 
and we have to figure out a way to display the legend outside of the box. Now let's move on to the solution. So let me just give the heading task 6. Now I am going to import pandas as pd. So import in small. So import pandas as pd and then I am going to read the data frame. So reading the data frame. So df3 is equal to pd dot read underscore csv and I have to pass the data frame name as df3. Now I'm going to display the data frame. So this is the data frame. Now our first task is to create an area plot. So I need to write df3 dot plot dot area. So this is the resultant area plot. It covers all the four columns and all the rows. So we need to make some changes. So now we need to personalize or we can say that we require some personalization. So we are going to draw an area plot only for the first 30 rows. So there are two methods. First is use of dot ix and the second one is the use of ILOC method. So now let's demonstrate. So I have to write df3 dot ix and I have to pass the slice 0 colon 30 and I'll write dot plot dot area. I'll run this cell. So this is giving me an error. So let me just change it to ILOC. So if you are getting an error with dot ix method, you can use dot ILOC method as discussed in the pandas module. So I'll change dot ix to dot ilOC. Just hang on for a second. So I'll change it to dot ilOC. I'll run this cell once again. So this time I didn't get any error. So I'll change it to dot i. L O C. So you can use either one. I got an error. So I use dot I L O C. Now let's change the alpha value. That is make the plot a little more transparent. For that I have to introduce one more parameter. That is alpha is equal to 0.4. So this is the resultant area plot. Now I need to figure out a way to display the legend outside the box. So display the legend outside the box. So I'll write. So this is the legend and I need to display it outside the box. So I'll write f is equal to pld dot figure. Then I'll write df3 dot ILOC. I'll pass the slice. I'll write dot plot dot area. And I'll pass alpha is equal to 0.4 and AX is equal to F dot GCA. You can also refer stack overflow to figure out how to display the legend outside the box. And you can also use this method. Now I'll write PLT dot legend and I'll pass LOC is equal to 
सेंटर लेफ्ट तो एल ओ सी इज इक्वल टू सेंटर लेफ्ट एंड बी बॉक्स टू एंकर बी बॉक्स टू एंकर इज इक्वल टू वन पॉइंट जीरो कॉमा पॉइंट फाइव and i'll write plt dot show so i got an empty graph this time because i need to write all of this together so please take care of this thing so i'll write everything in one cell i'll run it and this is the resultant area plot where the legend is displayed outside the box now we have completed the task 6 successfully that will be all for today this video is brought to you by programming knowledge please like comment share subscribe and hit the bell button for updates and stay tuned with us for next lecture thank you Hi guys welcome back to our course on data visualization with pandas in today's lecture i'm going to give you an overview to kegel so let's get started kegel is an online community of data scientists and machine learning practitioners it offers a no setup customizable jupyter notebook environment it provides access to gpus at no cost it allows users to collaborate with others find and publish data set the main use of kegel is for analyzing and downloading data sets and we can even collaborate with others now let me just show you the website that is kegel so it's www.kegel.com here you can see that there are three main sections of this website the first one is regarding the competitions second one is the short term courses and third one is regarding the data and code so first of all let's take a look at the competitions so these are some of the competitions the first one is regarding the titanic disaster and it's a machine learning problem and we have to predict the survival and second one is regarding the housing prices and the third one is the spaceship so we have different levels here so there are different levels of difficulty let me just move back to the home and there are different types of problems for beginners intermediate and advanced let's move on to the second section that is short term courses here we have courses for beginner intermediate as well as advanced level so in beginners we have intro to programming python and intro to machine learning in intermediate we have intro to deep learning intermediate machine learning and pandas and in advanced we have time series feature engineering and computer vision now let's move on to the third section of this website which is browsing inspiring data and code so we can explore code of other people as well as we can explore the data set so here i can explore the code for example i open this heart attack analysis prediction so i can access the code written by other people so this is the code and these are the different sections of the notebook so this is the exploratory data analysis generally people document their code very well on kegel so this is one of the notebook so we can see the box plots here 
and uh, this person has used machine learning model that is logistic regression for prediction so we this is training the model then we have evaluation we'll discuss all of it in detail when we'll cover machine learning and other portions so this is all about analysis so heart attack analysis prediction now let me just move on to the data sets so we have different data sets available here so like instagram youtube videos then dislike youtube videos yoga so there are all varieties of data sets available on kegel and the most interesting part is the competitions we can even host a competition here so let's take a look at the active competitions so this is the first one that is first and future peer contact detection so there are 275 teams competing in this competition and the reward is hundred thousand dollars similarly there are different competitions that you can compete in to win money or you can even win an opportunity to work for a company which is hosting the competition now let's download a data set so let's download this yoga data set so to download you just need to click this download button over here so i click this button and I have all this data. Similarly, you can access and download different kinds of data from this website. That's all about KKL. I'll discuss some sections in detail in future videos. That will be all for today. This video is brought to you by Programming Knowledge. Please like, comment, share, subscribe and hit the bell button for updates and stay tuned with us for next lecture. Thank you.